Hi everyone, welcome to Woolen Spinning. My name is Rachel and I can be found pretty much everywhere as well for pearls. Thank you so much for joining me in this place. Thank you for tuning in. If you're a returning viewer of the show, thank you so much for checking, for continuing to stick with me month after month. And for those who are new to the show, thank you for giving me a shot. It is an absolutely beautiful afternoon here and we have just been on the road for three and a half hours driving. Um, we were camping all weekend and the kids had a blast, we had a blast. I'm a bit sun soaked. Um, I wore, we had lots of sunscreen and stuff on but um, it's amazing how just that little bit more intense sun and that little bit more intense heat, how it affects you. Uh, and I really wanted to podcast because I needed a break, wanted to sit down and have some quiet time. And the kids are outside helping Mike do the lawn and they just finished, but now everybody and their neighbor is uh, mowing their lawn. So I'm hoping that it won't be too loud and I'm hoping that with the windows closed that you won't hear too much background noise. But if you do, I'm really sorry in advance. Um, today is uh, Wednesday, June 7th, I think, and this is episode number 73. I um, have a little bit to share with you. I actually have a finished object, which is really unusual for me. I have some progress on all of my hand spun socks that I've been working on and I have a little project to share with you that I worked on over the weekend that is actually finished, which is kind of cool. So there isn't really a lot of housekeeping for this week. I did want to mention, because I mentioned it last show and I wanted to make sure that it caught everybody and that you heard, the show is going to go uh, to twice per month for the remainder of the summer. So it will be the first and the third week of each month for June, July and August. I hope that um, you'll be able to make it if you're a Patreon subscriber to either, I'm gonna put a poll on the Ravelry group um, for whether or not the live stream will happen on Monday, June, June 12th in the morning or Monday, June 12th in the evening. So I will put that up and whomever, whichever date gets the most votes, we will do it on that date. So I hope that you are able to make it if you are a Patreon subscriber. So the third show of every, or the second show of every month, which is the third week of every month, is live streamed and recorded ahead of time with the Patreon audience. So I hope you're able to join if you are a Patreon subscriber. Um, and for those who are new to Patreon and aren't sure how that all works, just watch Patreon. I send out a message the week before so that you know what to expect. And I'm also going to do the monthly draw that week um, every month for the summer. So that is something to look forward to. So like I said, there won't be a show next week, but there will be a live stream show the week after. Um, I also wanted to mention, we hit a thousand uh, members in the Ravelry group about a week ago. That is just amazing. There's a lot of chatter in there, lots of people sharing lots of things. I am gonna do a draw um, out of anybody who has introduced themselves. I'm gonna do a draw out of that thread on the Ravelry group. So if you haven't introduced yourself, be sure to pop over there and introduce yourself and you may or may not win something next week. Next episode, I should say. I think that was everything. So I have my, my socks my, and my two finished projects. So let's get on with the show. So I thought I'd show my socks first uh, because I've been working on them all weekend. I did finish two of them and now I have the mate of each of them to make. So I'm just going to move my stuff out of the way because otherwise it's going to get, it's going to fall. So I'll start with these socks first. Uh, these are my speckle dyed um, that I made from my, uh, 
superwash wool. It was a three plied, traditional three plied speckle dye that I dyed myself um, back in November of 2014. So it seems like so long ago now. Um, I just love how these turned out. I did two inches of ribbing at the top and the heel turned beautifully. This is the Fish Lips Kiss heel, which I always use because it fits my heel and my foot really well with a couple of gusset increases on each side before I get there. Um, so I do two gusset increases and then I work the heel and it's, they're just perfect for me. And um, so this is the first sock done. I have the remainder of the ball to do the second sock and then those will be done. So I'll be hopefully casting those on tonight, hopefully. We'll see how this evening goes. It depends on how well the kids go to bed. And then I finished my fugly sock. I showed this last week, but I had um, that I didn't like how I what I'd done with the cuff. So I had done a really short cuff, and so I actually increased the length of the cuff. I added about an inch and a half to the cuff. So I undid it, re-knit it, and that is how these have ended up. And I really, really like um, how these fit now. I just needed more ribbing on the cuff to finish them off to make them a little bit snugger. And uh, that finished them off really well. So I have actually started the second the mate to this pair and I'm just about I've got about four rows left and then I'll be able to turn the heel so I might actually get the heel turned tonight we'll see so maybe next show I'll have two pairs of finished socks I don't know we'll see I'm not working a ton between now and the next show I think I have four shifts and if they're not night shifts I don't get very much knitting done so um and then I don't have any nights until the end of the month so we'll see how much I actually get done on those um, I will say the yarn for these socks, this was Smith & You Superwash BFL. It was uh, um, a colorway that I fell in love with when I saw. I've talked about this colorway a lot. I've talked about how I spun it and what I did, um, what I liked and didn't like. So maybe go back to the last couple of episodes because I have talked about these quite a bit. Um, with this sock, I'm not sure why, but the yarn, I think because we were driving and I was knitting while we were driving, so I wasn't paying a lot of attention. I dropped about four stitches, which is so unusual for me. I caught it every single time. Um, and every time I stopped and looked to make sure I hadn't dropped more stitches, because I, st I started stopping myself and checking, um, I found this spot down here, right here, where I split the stitch and it's really threadbare there. So when I'm finished, I'm gonna go back and I'm gonna weave some of that same color. I'll find it in the ball and I'll weave that color in there and strengthen it up because it's a weak spot in the yarn and it won't wear very well. So um, that was kind of a bummer. And by then I was like up here and it was too far down to drop back down and fix the stitch. So I could have ripped back, I could have dropped down, but I just kept on going and figured I'd graft over it and that that would be fine. So those are my socks. They're moving along really well, finally. The other little project that I took with us this weekend, and actually it's funny because when we were camping with the bright sun and just the beautiful weather that we had, um, this looked really, really bright while we were away. And now that I'm inside and I'm home, it looks really muted and really um, jewel toned, which is kind of funny how you know the different lighting changes. So this is the Tapestry colorway by uh, Sweet Georgie Yarns. And um, they asked me to do just a little sample spin of it over the weekend because this is a brand new base that's going to be coming to Sweet Georgia in the coming seasons. And I was going to take my wheel and I had my sidekick all packed up and ready to go. It was in its bag and I had everything sorted. And right at the last minute, I left it behind and I took my large Kapar spindle. This is a, or maybe it's a medium. It's 30 grams anyhow. Um, and this is from Natural Knotwood in uh, Winnipeg. This is probably, I think this is probably my most used spindle, I think. Um, I just love it. it. It's such a great spindle. And then I knit up a little swatch. So I just did a center pull ball, plied it up, and then knit it up. And I'll drop this off on Wednesday night when I teach at Sweet Georgia. And I have to admit, I absolutely love how this knit up. It is so pretty. I knit this on the way home this morning. We left the campground and we hit, if you know BC, uh, we were staying at, we were camping at Monk Provincial Park, which is just outside of Merritt, BC. And so from the time that we left Monk and pulled in for gas at Merritt, because we have to gas up in Merritt if we're going to make it all the way home, um, we gassed up in Merritt and I was casting off. That's how quick this was to knit. It was about 20 minutes of knitting. <laughs> so it was kind of nice. And it turned out really, really beautifully. I, I quite like it. 
So I'll drop that off with uh, with Charlotte in the studio on Wednesday. And that was kind of a fun little project because I didn't work on it a ton over the weekend, but it was enough that I felt like I was really getting something done. Um, it was something to work on and that I needed to keep working on to get it done over the weekend, but there was no stress because um, I could have banged it out on my wheel tonight if I hadn't have gotten it done. So the big project that I have finished is something that I actually blocked on Wednesday night a week ago. Um, and this is my Smith & You uh, Superwash BFL shawl that I finished last week. And I showed it on the podcast and the light behind me is going to actually um, shine through it and you won't be able to really see it. But I will put it on. And of course, I'll include some photos of it uh, so that you can really get an idea of what it's like, because sometimes it's hard for me to show it on the podcast and really give you a really good idea of what these shawls look like. But this is it. It's nice and big. It's exactly what I was hoping for. Um, I talked about last show how on the wings of the shawl, I haven't woven in the ends yet. Normally, I'd weave them in before I washed it and blocked it. But we had a really, really warm day and I wanted to get it blocked and dry because otherwise I find they just sit on the dining room table damp for days on end and it doesn't dry. And I thought, you know what, it's warm. It's a beautiful day. I'm going to open up the windows at either end of this room. This is one big, long um, room that goes from our living room, entranceway living room and into our dining room. And I could get the wind blowing through and it dried it within a few hours. So that was great. And I had, so I had talked about last um, episode that I had done some increases. So I got to about here on the shawl. Let me see if I can find them on the wrong side. So I did three stitches down the edge for the uh, garter, garter stitch border. And about, yeah, so about here, I started increasing on the right side, every right side row, which I had been doing from the beginning. But then I also started increasing on the wrong side every fourth row. So I would knit three, increase, and then the next row I would um, just come back, and then I'd knit three, increase again, and then on my way back I would increase knit three. So I was increasing basically three stitches every four rows from about here onwards. And I also upsized my needle. I don't think I mentioned that. So I went from five millimeter needles from approximately here at the beginning at the garter tab cast on to where my hand is over here. I knit it on five millimeter needles. And then from here to where the garter stitch starts, I knit on 5.5 millimeter needles. And then for the border, I did six millimeter needles. And I could have gone up to 6.5, but I decided at that point just to keep it easy keep it simple, my hair is caught. And then I cast off. Um, I ended up finishing off with about two yards of yarn, so I'm glad that I cast off when I did. I only ended up with four garter stitch ridges down the bottom. And then I did a stretchy cast off so that I could really stretch it to the end of its limits. And I used my blocking wires across the top here I used blocking wires down the center and then I used blocking wires on the edge so that it was a perfect triangle. So I had a blocking wire here, here, and blocking wires across the top and it really stretched it out to the end of its limits. And so far it's holding its block really well. It's super wash. Um, I did lightly steam it after it was finished drying. I used the iron and I just ran my the steam over top. And um, that's probably helping it hold its block as well a little bit. Um, I suspect over time I'll have to re-block it. Like most shawls, you know, like most things that we knit and make, we have to wa wash them and keep them, keep them, you know, um, it, it, in its shape. But the yarn was just so great to work with. And I'm so glad that I finally, after all this time, figured out what I wanted to use this yarn for because it was just sitting in my stash and I was just dying to knit with it and I just didn't know what to make with it. And this just ended up being the perfect project for this yarn. 
I'm really glad that I ripped out the other projects that I had started with this yarn because I had tried a few different patterns and nothing really seemed to work. And in the end, just the plain stockinette was what really worked well with the garter stitch at the bottom. If I had had one more two ounce bump of this fiber, um, not a full four ounces, but two ounces, it would have made the border just that little bit wider and that little bit longer that I think I would have really liked that um, just to make it a bit wider. But in some ways, I don't think I would have wanted the shawl any bigger. As it is, it's my wingspan. And um, I think that's about right for a shawl for me. Any bigger and I don't wear them. Yeah, it's my it's my wingspan. So I'm five foot four, so it's approximately sixty-five inches sixty-four inches wide from from wing tip to wing tip. And you know, that's about right for me. Any bigger and it's just too big. Um I find they're hard to wear and I just really love these triangle shawls. I love how they um rest on your shoulders. I find with the crescent shawls, I really like what they look like, but I don't find that I, I can wear them very easily. I find I have to clip them or pin them or do something with them. And I don't know if anybody has any secrets for them, because, but when I'm with the kids and we're out and about, especially when it's cold out, I can't be fiddling with pins and trying to like put it just so on my shoulders. This works for me. Um, especially when it's under my jacket and I know that I will wear it. Um, my other vanilla shawl that I showed last show, I had thrown a photo of it in to refresh your memories about that shawl. Um, I wear that thing all the time and I think it's partially the shape and it's partially just the wearability of it. It's just so easy for me. Um, that real like grab and go, take and, take and go kind of lifestyle. And you can throw it on over a t-shirt and it dresses up the outfit and also makes it warm without throwing on a cardigan or a, um, a sweater. Because I find that a lot of my sweaters in our climate, they're just too warm. And I've talked about that before on the podcast. So this was just the perfect project. I'm actually going to stash dive and see if I can find some more hand spun yarn that I could stripe and do another one like this that's maybe a bit lighter in some different colors because if I could have a few in a couple of different colors I think they would be real staples in my wardrobe and I would wear them a lot and it would also blast through a bunch of yarn that's just languishing right now that I'd really like to use and I'd really like to knit up so fingers crossed I can find some colors and some colorways that work I think that's it for today um this is a little bit of a shorter show partially because I just don't have a ton to share right now and I don't have a ton that I've been working on um, I haven't been really working on my combo spin, although I do have a second bobbin about, I'm looking at it, it's over there. It's probably about two thirds full um, and that bag is still not ever ending. And I haven't made any progress or practice on my um, changing my hand dominance. I've been still playing with that, but I just haven't been doing a lot. And I think part of it is the weather is beautiful. Uh, we wanted to get away this weekend. We had a great time, like I said, and it's just too nice to be inside and sitting and working on stuff right now. And I find it this time of year, I, I definitely go through lulls and ups and downs of making and creating and, and doing my crafting versus balance, finding that balance and that sweet spot of wanting to be outside and active and busy. I've also been trying to make some changes with my lifestyle and that's definitely cutting into how much time I can spend doing this stuff. So. I know that you all understand and um, are just so supportive and I hope that it, whatever you're working on and whatever you're doing this spring or fall, because I know uh, different seasons in different areas of the world, that it's going really well and that you're enjoying what you're making and that what you're making is can become a staple in your own wardrobe. So until next week, no, until two weeks from now, happy spinning, happy knitting and if you're a Patreon subscriber, please stay tuned for the live stream date for a couple of weeks from now. Bye everyone.